Good morning, guys. So we are going to continue with graphing quadratics. We're going to be looking at graphing ax squared plus c today. So the only difference here is we're adding a c term, which you'll probably be able to figure out what that's going to do. But let's take a look. We're going to skip the exploration as usual. Alrighty, so core concept here. When C is greater than zero, the graph of AX squared plus C is a vertical translation, C units up of the graph. So basically what C is doing is it's moving it up and down, all right? In essence, your C is going to, well, if we don't have a B term, become your Y intercept, but depends what's gonna happen when we have a B term. But for now, C moves your graph up and down, okay? It's a vertical translation. When you see the term vertical translation, that means it's moving the graph up or down. The vertex of the graph f of x equals ax squared plus c is 0 comma c. Okay. And the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 0 because it's going through that vertex, that x value of the vertex. So c is just a vertical translation. It's going to be moving our graphs up and down. So it says compare the graph um, g of x equals x squared minus 2 to the parent function of x squared. So our parent function is already graphed on there. So if we think about our parent function here, we've got 0, 0, negative 2, 1, and 2. When we plug in negative 1, and now a, a graph of x squared minus 2 is just going to be a shift down to units. I'm going to use little x's or else it's not going to work. Okay. So I know that my vertex is going to be at the point 0, comma, negative 2. Two ways you can think about doing it. You can think of it just as a shift down two units. So everything's going to be down two units. Or if you want to go ahead and plug in the values for x, you can plug them in here. So if I do 1 squared minus 2, I know I'm going to get a value of negative 1. And that's a shift down two units. Remember, if we look at our parent function, our parent function was at 1, 1, and our new function, shift down to units, is at 1, negative 1. So we can go ahead and put in the rest of our points. 1, negative 1 would be, oops, I graphed my vertex wrong, because this graph is going up by 2. So there's my vertex. 1, negative 1 would be here. And then I can have the same point here. Remember, both of these graphs have an axis of symmetry at zero. Okay. And then if I continue, when I plug in a two, a negative two and a two, I'm going to get y values of two. So I'll have two, two and negative two, two. And then I could draw in my graph. And there's my new graph. So for us to compare these functions, a couple things. Okay, the axis of symmetry, the AOS, is x equals 0 for both. So that didn't change. Our vertex in our new graph is now 0, negative 2. So that did change. So this was a vertical shift or a vertical translation down two units. Okay, it's the same width as my original function. The only thing that's different is it just shifted down two units. And we know that because it's minus two here. I don't think we need to go through these examples. If we just kind of think, we know that this is going to go down five, and you can do these on your own, and then just go up three. So your vertex is going to change, um, and everything's going to be shifted in those directions. All right, let's take a look at this one now. Now we're graphing 4x squared plus 1, and we're comparing that to our original graph. So our original graph is shown here. So we've got 0, 0, negative 1, 1, and 1, 1. And then we've got negative 2, 4, and 2, 4. Now we have to graph our new function, which is 4x squared plus 1. So a couple of things are going to happen here. I know the plus 1 is going to move my graph up 1. And if we're thinking from last class what that 4 is going to be doing, it's going to make my graph narrower 
So I know this is going to be a narrower graph. Okay, and it's the technical term for that is a vertical stretch. So this is going to become a little bit more difficult now. So I want to go ahead and I want to make my um, table of values here. That's the easiest way. So when you're doing a problem like this, make a table of values. Now, you might have Desmos to use for now, but you won't always have Desmos. So when you see a problem like this, easiest thing to do, make a table of values. And let's start with the vertex. I know it's going to move up one unit. So if I plug in a zero here, I know it's going to move up one unit. Zero squared times four is zero, plus one is zero, one. There's the up one that's different. So I know I have my vertex at zero, one. And now let's plug in points on either side. You always want to pick points on either side of the vertex and make your vertex your middle point. So let's plug in a one here. One squared is one times four is four plus one is five. That means that this is going to be a five. If I plug in a two, two squared is four. Four times four is 16. That'll give me a 17. So all I'm doing is I'm just plugging in the X values here. So let's plot our points here. We're going to have 1, 5, which is going to be up here, and then negative 1, 5, which is going to be here. I can't plot 217 on my graph. So we're going to be there. So what's true about this graph and how has it changed? Okay, if we think about how this graph has changed, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. That resulted in the graph being narrower. And then we also have a vertical shift up one. My vertex is right there. And my axis of symmetry would be at x equals zero. That's the imaginary line that goes there. So it does have the same axis of symmetry as my original graph. Okay, the vertex has changed. It did shift up one. It's narrower, which means it's a vertical stretch by four, and it's a vertical shift up one. So when you're asked to compare the graphs, that's what we're looking for, comparison to the parent function. And it's not a bad idea to always put the parent function on there. We're gonna skip this example. Okay, you can do these on your own if you want to, and we'll make sure that the completed notes are in there. But just make sure that you know what your A is doing and you know what your C is doing. And again, guys, you can use Desmos to help you with the graphs, but you have to be able to describe what's going on in each of them. That's all for today, guys. Good luck.